What's up, YouTube? This is Casey Knight, aka The Movie Knight, and this is our review for Assassin's Creed. So this will be the first of many drunk reviews where when a movie is so bad it makes us want to drink. And I'm joined today by my friend Joey Mack. Hi. I'm going to start eating right now. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was with the character. I mean, fuck it. All right. You son of a bitch. <laughs> get into it so assassin's greed is a film based on a video game franchise that's been very popular for a number of years what it started in like 2007 mm -hmm. or something like that this film stars michael fassbender and maria caltiard as well as jeremy irons all very capable actors the movie isn't great <laughs> uh let's start with good things joy what did you like about the movie okay so the one thing that i that i appreciated uh throughout the film was that it was mostly true to the franchise they kind of played around with the narrative a little bit they, but it was still the same kind of structure of the assassin's creed franchise so you got the assassins versus the templars yep you know the animus is there he goes back into his ancestors memories helping these people who control the animus mm -hmm. find something that they need throughout the movie you do get the whole assassin's creed vibe yeah the game it's if, if if you're the costumes of the game, were really good they were the they weapons weren't, they weren't were all... they weren't over the top i think no they one, fit. Of the, one of the few yeah one of the few criticisms of the game that some people have is that the costumes are over the top because they are you like, wouldn't see them in broad daylight exactly yeah they're a so, little too shiny Visually, this film is really, really pretty. Every scene you see, especially when they're back in ancient times, is gorgeous. The main criticism of the way the, the landscapes were, were, wow, this is a beautiful landscape covered almost entirely <laughs> with a thick layer of smoke. We're talking like lost smoke monster levels of smoke <laughs> in this movie. It's like the whole movie's on fire from the bottom or a guy in front of you in the theater is just smoking a cigarette. It's kind of crazy, yeah, but there, otherwise it's very pretty. There sure was a lot of air pollution in Inquisition era Spain. <laughs> but uh, I think they filmed it in LA. <laughs> Do you think they filmed it in LA? <laughs> What you did see was visually very well done. I think the cinematography overall was very uh, well yeah. done. Almost almost too well. But... Possibly over-directed to yes. an extent. Where some of the fight scenes, you had about a million cuts in about 30 seconds of footage. Took me a little bit out of the fight scenes. Kind of like Michael Bay with Transformers, where a lot of times mm -hmm. you just feel like you know a bunch of nuts and bolts are being screwed together like yeah. in extra 3d with shaky cam it was kind of like that where if you could have just panned out and showed a little bit of what was happening on a grander scale uh i think i would have enjoyed some of the action sequences a little better it was a shaky camera and it's almost like the movie didn't want to show the quality of the fight choreography which didn't make sense because it was so good yeah it Here, was good but it's... honestly that the fight scenes might come off a little too pretty, like episode one Phantom Menace lightsaber fights where they're just kind of spinning and jumping and twirling, and uh, very little of it has to do with actual, you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat and how that would really work. But in this movie, I didn't feel that. The assassins, they weren't untouchable. They It was very much like the game where if you came across 10 guys, you better start booking that mm -hmm. way. So they, they played that part right. They didn't make it into a superhero movie where these guys had unbelievable you know, ridiculous uh, abilities, but it was more like a kung fu movie where these guys had a higher sense of abilities than the goons and stuff they fight, but not to an extent where it was unbelievable. So the acting in this film, you've got Michael Fassbender, Maria Cotillard, and Jeremy Irons, three actors that I love, very rarely put in a bad performance, if ever, and they didn't save this movie for me. I felt like Michael Fassbender's performance at times was good. You could see him putting in so much effort and really trying to put this film on his shoulders. I felt like a lot of his dialogue was neutered, a lot of his scenes were chopped up, and his motivations as a character didn't make him a character I really wanted to root for. And Maria Cotillard is beautiful, and uh, she has an accent, so <laughs> it makes everything she says 
sound a little mm. more important, <laughs> but that's about it. There's a lot of, you know, mm. glaring, silent moments where, you know, the, the music's just, mm, and she's just like staring, and Jeremy Irons is, you know, upside, up, up top, just On the disapproving. Second floor, yes. With a big window. <laughs> yeah. And just disapproving with his hands behind his, <laughs> you know, like that. And uh, Michael Fassbender looks generally pissed or confused which is kind of how we felt throughout the movie as well best bender was fantastic i think he's too good for this movie yeah he couldn't save this movie as good as he is which brings me to the end of the movie which was probably the most disappointing part of the movie (laughs) ergo the heavy drinking tonight uh this movie had (laughs) <laughs> got a beer accident over here. I need towels. <laughs> you need towels. <laughs> and we're back. Okay, so now we're going to get into the ending of this film, which to me, if the movie was passable to this point, the ending just really made me want to drink heavily. I was so furious with this movie. <sighs> it builds to this big thing that they're all searching for, that they need the whole movie and then when you finally get to it, if there was a bit of intrigue left, it's gone. I don't care anymore. I'm mad. They're building it to a sequel, and the sequel is not going to happen because this movie is not worth your money. Okay, so I understand what they were going for with the ending. Yeah. And I just spit on you. Sorry. <laughs> they intend for it to lead into a franchise or a series or a sequel or, or something because they left it with not no real conclusion. This the ending to this movie reminded me a lot of Green Lantern, where if you if you didn't storm out of the theater, they had this cute little tag teaser at the end, where Sinestro you. turns into the Yellow Lantern core guy, and oh, he's gonna be the villain in the next one, the next one that never happens because the first movie sucked and made everyone mad. What would you grade the film out of ten? Okay, uh, in my head, I kind of have two different grades for it. One as just a standalone film and ju- and one as a video game film. And when I fuse them, I come up with a uh, six point, I don't know, three. Right. Fuck it, why not? It mostly stays true to the franchise. It creates its own narrative. But at the same time, the fight scenes, I mean, all that jumbled sort of camera work, it really kind of takes you away from it. And the ending is just complete utter garbage just fuck i can't even <laughs> we have plenty of choice words for it coming up in the spoiler section but overall you'd give it uh 6.3 6. just because 3. i want to use a nice exact number with a decimal point yeah exact <laughs> like 6.3 <laughs> okay so for me this movie sucked i did not like it um i am a fan of the franchise so I went in a little bit optimistic. So if you take it with a grain of salt, I thought this movie could have been a really fun, dumb, shove popcorn in my mouth action flick, and they couldn't even get that right. Because of the sci-fi elements, the fact that he gets strapped into a machine that makes him think of memories of his you know, ancestors and relive them, I knew there was an aspect of this film that some people would have a hard time digesting. But I thought, even if you just nail the portion that we all had the most fun with during the video game the fighting this being stealthy there's not one scene where an assassin is stealthy in this entire movie it failed in the one spot where it could have done something really easy and made it fun so i didn't have a fun time at the theater there was not one joke not one point of levity in this movie that made me think well it's dumb but it's fun so i can at least enjoy it on some level I really couldn't find a, a, an emotional level to meet this movie on. So for me, I give this movie a 5.5. Five and a half. It wasn't good. Okay, so if you're watching beyond this point, there's going to be a spoiler tag up here or there or somewhere. I, I don't know yet. If you don't want to know what happens in this movie, don't watch beyond this point. We're going to spoil the hell out of it. But for what it's worth, this movie isn't worth yeah. your money. You're not missing much. No. <laughs> We're just going to tell you exactly what we've been saying generically and vaguely is wrong with this movie. I'm going to start it off with one word. Birds. Birds, birds, birds. (laughs) Every 
fucking scene in this movie that could be cool. Big action sequence where they go into the Animus and he's back in the memories and he's gonna be the assassin. You're like, sweet, this is gonna be war, it's gonna be assassins, it's gonna be switchblades coming out of the wrists and all that cool shit. Has to intro with a goddamn bird. And if we're to believe he's seeing everything through the eyes of his ancestor, his ancestor might as well be a fucking falcon. It was terrible. And and they never they never fucking explain what the point of the bird is, and that's what I was thinking after like the third time we see the bird. No. I was like, okay, they haven't explained the point of the bird by now. Why is there a bird? To it's be, the intro to yeah. every scene, and I started keeping count, but then I lost count because it happened so many times. It had to be eight or nine it was times. More, it was more. It was more than one. Less than like I don't know, 150. The third time I saw the bird, I laughed. The fifth the time, time I saw the bird. The second time you actually mentioned it to me, it's like, what the fuck is up with this bird? I'm like, does this and guy I was still, have a fetish I was still, for birds? I was still, I was still giving him the benefit of the doubt. I was like, hang on, maybe it's one of these like things where it, you know, works. Yeah. And I was, uh, and I was wrong. It no. doesn't, it doesn't work at all. And it came back so many times. Spoiler alert: There's a scene where they're just standing in a static environment, and the roof is white, and it's animated like there's birds flying across it. And I was like, I think this guy's like, he's like, Quentin Tarantino always like films feet. So people think he has a, a foot fetish. This director has a serious fucking bird <laughs> fetish. All he wants is birds. He's like, how about we see everything through a bird? And they're like, you make the money, man. We'll just make it happen. You want a fucking bird? We'll put birds in the movie. CGI birds, real birds, wallpaper birds. Another problem I had with this movie was the animus. In the video games, the Animus is just like this kind of bed thing you lay in. You get plugged in. It's a lot like the Matrix. Yeah. And that's it. You just get to do the cool shit now. In this movie, they're like, hey, you know those stupid claw games you can play at like Denny's? <laughs> yes. They made that into the Animus. So instead of like being able to see the cool action, it keeps constantly cutting back to this guy being grabbed by a giant, you know, machine arm while he's just like play fighting. And they tried to make it seem like when he was in there air punching that it was like cool, like him being trained to be a badass. They're like, we're making a monster. He's gonna be so good at fighting after punching nothing for six <laughs> hours a day. It's weird. I mean, although they had an entire bloodline of people that look like Michael Fassbender. Yeah. Michael Fassbender with a goatee, clean shaven Michael Fassbender, Michael Fassbender with a full beard. Obi-Wan Kenobi, Michael Fassbender. Right. Dude, I'm a fan of Fassbender. You can't give me enough Fassbender when it comes to X-Men movies and stuff. But there was way too many Fassbenders in this fucking film. Too much Fassbender even for me. Yeah. It was too Fassbender, too furious. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I didn't like about the way this whole visual aesthetic of this film worked is... He spends a lot of time in this facility where he's being put in Animus and stuff, which is great. Except for this place looked like if Apple designed prisons. It's futuristic and depressing at the same fucking time. It's like, hey, here's a cool bench to sit on that lights up from underneath you. And then over there, that's a rusty old shitty sink. It didn't make any fucking sense. Let's talk about the end of the movie because it was dark shit. They build this end where they, all the Templars are together and they're like, we have the thing we've been searching for for a hundred and four, five hundred fucking years. This fucking apple looks at this old man just like show it to us and then as he's holding it for some reason, even though many people have held it before, it just starts spewing out weird lasers and shit. It's like, oh cool, now we know how important it is. You see all these assassins, they're sneaking in blades in their throats and shit. And then they come in there and all of a sudden he's like, this is the thing we wanted. That will help us win the Earth! And then dude just like, click, and he's like, ooh, falls, grabs it, puts a Fuji apple in there, and then Margaret Thatcher and his daughter are all just like, that sucks, and then we pan oh, to no, a rooftop. No, hey, please, please don't go. Bring that back. Oh no, the no, thing we, we wanted. Spent, we, spent, we spent hundreds of years Billions looking for of it. dollars on this thing, and then like, Mass Fastbender's over on a rooftop, just doing his best arrow impression, and he's like, we've got it. And then there's the fucking bird again. Bird! The birds, the birds coming, and what I'm thinking at this time is... He okay, had hope for the gonna, bird. Yeah, we're gonna have this... Okay, admittedly <laughs> corny scene where Michael Fassbender is is holding the Apple of Eden, this super ancient artifact with all sorts of... So important. Untold powers or whatever the fuck. I'm gonna toss it up to this fucking bird. That bird's gonna bird swoop it up, grab it in its talons, and carry it off to 
wherever the fuck. Mordor. Oh my god. They spent dude. 210 minutes searching for this special fucking ball. And then they get it, and he's like, I got it. <laughs> and then the other guy's like, no, I fucking got it. End credits. That's the movie. There's a whole room full of some of the most powerful people on Earth who presumably have, like, you know, secret service escorts or whatever their equivalent of that is. The dude is right in front of hundreds of people who, like he said, <clears throat> are the most powerful people on the planet. Just, was... Not one of them has a gun, a knife, steps. a Swiss army knife, a pepper spray, a, an old cane to smack a guy with. The guy just slits his throat, takes the most important artifact known to man... And then walks out. And you just see them run. They're not running out. They're just walking out. Bottom line, this movie did not break the curse of mm. terrible, terrible video game Which movies. Which pains me. It pains me. This movie just took itself too seriously and was not fun. Please let me know what you thought of the movie. Did you see this movie? Are you going to see this movie? Did we scare you away from it? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. Take it easy.